then you may experience one or a combination of side effects or even no side effects at all. Side effects may include pain or tenderness in the area where you got the vaccine. You may also notice a little swelling or redness. To manage these, you may apply a clean, cool, wet washcloth or an ice pack over the area. Throughout your body, you may feel chills, fever, nausea, joint pain, tiredness, headache or muscle pain. To manage this discomfort, you should get plenty of rest. Drink fluids, but avoid alcohol and caffeine. If you need to manage pain, you may take paracetamol, not aspirin. You may continue to take all medications prescribed for you for your health condition. Vaccinate. For you. For yours. For us. Watching MBC. Good night, Sinu Show. Welcome to NBC's Police Insight. I am your host, Sergeant Zachary. He plays with the Royal Sinu Show Police Force. Uh, we are about five minutes late, so I guess Shane will give me five minutes extra time after ten. Uh, good night to our esteemed Commissioner of Police, Mr. Milton Daisy. Uh, good night to, exec to the Executive, uh, Gazette Officers, Inspectors, Sergeants, Corporals, Constables, both senior and junior, good night to you. Special police constables, special reserve police officers, our city police, our ex-police officers, thank you for your service. Um, those of you, those of our brothers and sisters in law enforcement, bodily correctional facility, customs, fire service, port police, good night to you. Security officers all around uh, the island, whether you, you're securing a government building or a private entity good night to you and to all of you who are logged in right now on the facebook streaming platform i'd like to say good night to you welcome to another episode of police insight this is where you tell a friend to tell a friend and without further ado since we have a packed show tonight we have a guest very important guest we found some important things to talk about but as usual we have our little housekeeping matters and news you know a lot has happened ladies and gentlemen but first of all before we go into the nitty-gritty especially the gritty um on may 18th the organization um con congratulated mr wayne shallery who has been appointed by the public service commission to the post of deputy commissioner of police effective june 1 2021 Mr. Shari has served as the Assistant Commissioner of Police with responsibility for operations as well as crime management. He has also served as the Acting Deputy Commissioner of Police with responsibility for operations in the past. Uh, according to the organization, Mr. Shari will continue to serve as a member of the Executive of the Royal Central Police Force as we strive to create a safer environment for all people in St. Lucia. Now that was the, the press release by the organization, but I have a little bit more for those of you who not to want to know a little bit more about Mr. Wayne Shallery. He was awarded the St. Lucia's Public Services Long Services Award on March 11th, 2018 by His, his Excellency, the Governor General Sir Neville Snack, for his immense and significant contributions to the national security of St. Lucia during his long and meritorious service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Prison Service. Having applied for and granted study leave with pay by the government of Sinusha in July 2006, Mr. Shari journeyed to New York City, USA, where he studied for a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice and Law Enforcement Administration with Monroe College. He graduated summa cum laude, having made the school's deans and presidents list multiple times during this period, as well as being listed on the prestigious international deans list. Mr. Shari was promoted to the rank of Corporal 
in September 2007, and, and, and I did work with Mr. Shari for some time. He was my supervisor in the Central Intelligence Unit. Yeah, we had some great times there. A lot of initiatives were conjured up at that time. So he was, he was um, promoted to corporal in September 2007 and given responsibility for the intelligence and crime management sections of the newly formed Central Intelligence Unit. He worked as a senior crime intelligence analyst slash crime management specialist at the Central Intelligence Unit and saw the introduction to St. Lucia's national security arm groundbreaking crime management innovations such as the Daily Crime Report and the known offenders tracking system. That's an amazing system. Mr. Shari was awarded the Commission of Police highest commendation on December 29, 2008 at the Royal St. Lucia Police Awards. And just a little more, ladies and gentlemen, bear with me. He became the interim administrator of the Bodley Correctional Facility for four months from November 2014 and February 2015, managing the facility exceptionally during the transition period between the departure of the former and advent of the new director of corrections. For his astute management of the Bodley Correctional Facility as officer in charge during the interim, Mr. Shari received the National Security Minister's highest commendation award. On June 16, 2016, during Elections Day, Mr. Shari, being the highest ranking senior officer on duty at the BCF, resolved a volatile situation that, left unchecked, would have led to a prison riot amongst the inmates. For his quick thinking, decisiveness, and ingenuity, Mr. Shari was presented with the Director of Corrections Highest Commendation Silver Award. He capped off the year by receiving the Most Outstanding Director Award at the facility's End of Year Staff Awards. So that's, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, um, Mr. Wayne Shari. <coughs> new deputy police commissioner come June 1st this year. And by all means, I will invite him to the show where he will definitely have the opportunity to be questioned and give his, his insight and his plans for the organization. As we all know, in such a role, ladies and gentlemen, you are definitely in the hot seat pun intended okay so thank you uh for bearing with me people and once again congratulations to you mr wayne shari ah over the weekend over the weekend ah my goodness my goodness the police we were busy we were busy we we conducted an operation um in denry on monday may 24 2021 um, executed 15 warrants to search for property at various locations and recovered two firearms, ammunition, and controlled drugs. Three males are currently in custody after a search was conducted upon a residence in Denry, where the following were recovered. One Draco 7.62 um, automatic rifle with two magazines and 25 7.62 rounds of ammunition. One Glock 19 with a magazine and 32 9 mm rounds of ammunition. One magazine and 15 9 mm rounds of ammunition. Yeah, the guys are apparently ready for war. About 4.5 kilograms of suspected cannabis was recovered at a second location, resulting in the arrest of one male. So charges are expected to be preferred um, shortly. And we all know what happened um, throughout the weekend. Uh, young individuals losing their lives, once again to gun violence. You know, you know, there comes a, a, a point where you don't even know what to say anymore. Um, but we continue to do what we can. The organization, we will continue to press on. Um, we have had successes, but as you could see, it seems to be um, maybe a drop in the bucket. But we're not deterred. We will continue with what we, with what we have to do. We continue also to thank the public for the assistance they've given us. Because this situation definitely belongs to us all. You know, when you look at the situation of what occurred in, in, in Jack Mill, um, from, what I, from, from the information received, the young lady was, was on her way or, 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 you know, doing a message or probably coming back from, from doing some, you know, running some errand. And um, she has lost her life. 
you know, and even in Denry, when you look at the news, those of you who uh, um, watch the news would have seen um, one of the individuals, the, the, the father, um, making the claim that his son um, was just a boy in the, in, in, in the community. He would run errands for people, you know, just a harmless boy, according to the community. Harmless individual. And he has lost his life for gun violence. We are not deterred. Um, yes, there's more that can be done. There's more we wish we could have done, but we could only do what we can with the resources at our disposal. And, you know, and I'd like to commend um, our police officers for continuously hitting the iron while it's hot. You know, you guys are amazing. However, be safe yourselves whilst we continue to um, press on and try to get every illegal firearm out of St. Lucia, off the streets, off the streets. Okay, um, Shane, we have a, and I understand some artists, I only have one video, so probably someone who's watching who maybe have other videos, send it to me on WhatsApp, 7200401, 7200401. I understand some of our musical artists have, 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 have spoken out in videos they've recorded, and I have one with Ampa, so let's listen to that, Shane. Good day to you all. This is a message for the youth of Denry, Jack Mel, Beaufort, in fact, all the youth of St. Lucia. My message to you who are involved in gangs and gun violence, what I want to tell you is make love, not war. Put down the guns. Most of you involved in gangs and gun violence don't even get to enjoy the pleasures of life. The pleasures of having a child, raising a family, traveling, buying land, building your own home, making your money and enjoying your life to the fullest. As a victim of gang violence myself, what I want to tell you youth involved in these things, it's only the hospital, the cemetery or the jail. That's where you're going to end up with these gangs and gun violence. Put down the guns. Page one day. Put down the guns. Page one day. You know, you know, and, and, and they say you, when you, you live by the sword, you die by it, you know, and then, you know, every time, you know, we have to see mothers coming on television or aunties stating whether or not, you know, some, as if like they were forced to justify whether or not their son in their eyes was a, a good citizen. What's the others that, that rightly would state, uh, we, we saw that coming, we expected that because of the, 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 the activities he was involved in, so, you know, we'll continue to do what we do. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's a very important show tonight. We have a representative from the RIT, W-R-I-T, Department of the Royal Central Police Force. And I know some of you have never heard of that department before, and they're so important. So without further ado, to discuss and let us know what the read department does and how it assists the courts especially, we have in studio Mr. Stanislas Albert, Officer Stanislas Albert of the read department. Good night to you, sir. Good evening. How are you doing, bro? I'm good for now. Yeah, I know you, you, you are at work today, so thank you for being here tonight. I know the work can be very challenging. Not a problem, at any time. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Stanislas Albert. I'm Police Constable number 889. Um, I've been with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for the past 26 years. I am presently attached to the RIG Department. Um, I am from the community of Baden Jackmel in the Roseau Valley. Ah, so let me ask you, since you said that, um, by any chance the individuals who lost their lives, did you know them personally? Yes, I do. Um, oh, okay. Both, both of the individuals who lost their lives, um, and also the others who got injured. Wow, wow. So I could just imagine how that has impacted you also as a police officer in the community. Yeah. So um, how long have you been in the organization, my brother? Um, come the 9th of June, it will be 26 years in some with the organization. 
<laughs> so you've been around and you've I've seen stuff. I've been around stuff. for some time. Okay, and right now you're currently attached to the read department. Yes, the read department. Yeah, okay. So tell us, um, what are the duties of the officers attached to the read department? What do they do? Well, the duties of the police officers um, attached to the read department are basically to serve reads coming from the various courts on island. Um, we have the first district court, we have the family court, and the high court that we serve documents, whatever documents come from these courts and also some documents from the second district district court in the south i see so we could say that writ actually are, are documents from the courts yes writ, a writ um a lot of persons when they see the word writ yeah they seems to think that it's an acronym mm, yeah and, I, I, and yeah they, and they try to to explain <laughs> what it is so um the w they would put it stands for warrant and the r and the, the i and the t they can never get what it is. <laughs> But RIT is not yeah. an acronym. Okay. Um, RIT actually is any document coming from the courts. I see. I see. Excellent. So um, tell us about, um, in terms of the strength of that department, um, what's the strength? Who's in charge? Who's there? Um, basically what's on paper is that there, there's supposed to be about nine persons at the RIT. But okay. presently, we, the strength of the department is at five. Um, there are three of us read silvers. We have a WSPC who works with us. And as I said, the WBC works with us. Mm -hmm. Today is above this, so I want to say uh, happy birthday to Mrs. Mrs. Gaston. Mrs. Gaston, okay. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Gaston does most of the admin work at the office okay. in case of in registering the warrants when they get her in the various registers mm -hmm. and um, we have sergeant de leon who's our sergeant at the moment i see and um you said five and your jurisdiction to me early on you said that sometimes you get reached from the second judicial district yes we do so there are times where you have to go down <coughs> south um yes, there, are, there, there are times that we we have to go down south especially with warrants coming from the high court mm -hmm. um these days we have a lot of bench warrants coming from the high court persons who are supposed to be in court and for one reason or the other they are not in court and the court would issue bench warrants for them mm -hmm. and we have to get them wherever they are to bring to the high court so so in terms of jurisdiction you guys responsible from the north to where um our borders are <laughs> Whatever the borders of St. Lucia <laughs> is at the moment. Probably even on the sea. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. basically it's the entire island. The uh, island? Yeah. Although we have, um, we have, I wouldn't want to say read departments, but we have persons at some of the stations who okay. does read work okay. specifically. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes even with these persons in this, these areas, we those of us who are in the north it, we also have to venture into these areas i see i see because i know we have um cox i believe yeah, it cox is, is at in the north there um uh -huh. who else at sufra we have um lansico lansico um well the individual that i knew from miku is no longer the, the one doing it um there's another individual mm -hmm. which i'm not familiar with the name um in viewfort i think viewfort actually has a read department Oh, okay. I don't know um, if it is still um, active, but I know Viewfort has a read department. From what, from what, from my knowledge, I know that Viewfort had a read department. Okay, excellent. Let, let's get into some of the documents now. Um, we've heard this term summons. Yeah, does the read department, first of all, deliver summonses? Yes, we serve summons. Um, as of late, the summons that we basically usually would get we would be. Um, we used to get a lot of traffic summons okay. and jurors summons. Jurors summons? Yes. Interesting. At uh, one point in time, we, we were serving the jurors summons. And for those who don't know what a summons is, could you explain? A summons would be a document that would um, indicate to an individual that of a date or mm -hmm. time that they should be in court. Okay. Okay. And in terms of the jurors, same for the jurors, I guess? Well, the jurors, it would, yes. It would be the same thing. Okay, excellent. As a matter of fact, um, jurors, I need to have a show on, on juror and jury duty, ladies and gentlemen. Now, that would be a very, <clears throat> a very nice show as to how jurors are selected, etc., and whatnot. So I'll be contacting the courts. Okay, so let's get into warrants now. 
I'll be taking a break soon. So we head over with warrant. There are different types of warrants. There are right? different types of warrants. A lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the ones that are more common would be um, a commitment warrant. These mm -hmm. are warrants coming from the criminal court, mm -hmm. both the low court and the high court. Um, this would be after a conviction. After a conviction. Usually, the magistrate or the judge would give the individual some time to pay. Mm -hmm. And failing to pay by that particular time, a warrant would be issued if the sum in question is not paid. And is there any time limit or frame for war a commitment warrant? Um, for example, like some people believe, okay, you know, I was in the court or I was convicted, given some time to pay, I've now taken a trip, I've gone to America or wherever for 10, 15 years, I can come back and that warrant may be somewhere, hidden somewhere under the dust or something. Is that the case? Mm, apparently, the only thing that erases a warrant is death <laughs> or payment. <laughs> Death for payment. Death for payment. So, so it is there. In the case where an individual dies and you have a warrant for the individual, you would have to get a copy of the death certificate mm -hmm. to put on that warrant and return it to the court. Other than that, the only two things which can get rid of that warrant would be to pay, to pay. or if you want to appeal. And sometimes, because there was on one occasion when at the red department we had a lot of traffic warrants. Mm -hmm. And the lady came one morning and she, we had a warrant for her and the officer called her. And she came in and she said she would like to appeal the warrant. So they gave her as information as to what the procedures would be. Mm -hmm. And she came back smiling about 15 minutes later and said, she went to the lawyer and the lawyer told her, go pay the warrant because the, the cost of appealing, appealing <laughs> was three times what the amount on, on the warrant was. Interesting. Yeah, so like, I've, like I said, these are the two only ways in which you can get rid of a warrant is by payment or by an appeal at the court okay excellent we are going to take uh, our very first break it's after nine the time flies so bad so so quickly when we come back i'll be asking our guests about the maintenance warrant child maintenance stay tuned to police inside and the proud recipient of the 2018, 2019, and 2020 Grand Gold Mond Selection Quality Award. Our choice is clear. Crystal clear. McDowell Supplements, an effective way to ensure you and your loved ones are getting the daily recommended intake of essential vitamins, minerals, and other important nutrients necessary for optimal health. Naturally, we carry an array of health and wellness supplements. McDowell's Immune Booster enhances your body's defense to fight colds and flu, boosts your immune system, prevents viruses and other airborne diseases. McDowell's Colon Cleanser prevents constipation, helps in removing toxins from the colon, detoxifies the body, and regulates your bowel movements. McDowell's Prostate help prevent the enlargement of the prostate, improve urinary flow, and reduce frequent urination, especially at night. Moringa Oleifera capsules are rich in minerals like calcium, potassium, zinc, magnesium, iron, and copper, vitamins like beta-carotene of vitamin A, vitamin B such as folic acid, vitamin C, D, and E. McDowell's Potassium Complex, used for treating and preventing low potassium levels, high blood pressure, preventing stroke, and aid in weight loss. McDowell's Triple Magnesium relaxes the muscles, relieves cramps and helps to control high blood pressure, improves sleep, and can calm the nerves. Magnesium is very important for the normal functioning of cells, nerves, muscles, bones, and the heart. McDowell's Ginger Turmeric helps to relieve pain, decrease nausea and enhance the immune function to help protect against illness and infection. Ginger Turmeric has powerful anti-inflammatory properties and improves your circulation. Don't hold health back. Let health strike back. McDowell's, the better way to start your health. Visit Health Service Center, John Compton Highway. Call 453-6417. Let your wellness be our stress. 
Boost your commercial success with NBC TV and NBC Social. Don't look back. Invest in your advertising. Reach your target audience at peak times and off peak times. We deliver strategically placed advertising spots at the most competitive rates. Also ask about our production services, which include television ad production, jingles and documentaries designed to suit your business needs. We also deliver classified ads designed for land sales, job opportunities and more. Advertise with NBC TV and NBC Social. The COVID-19 vaccination drive is mobile and coming to you. There you can get the vaccine. It will protect you from developing severe outcomes of COVID-19 and make you less likely to spread the virus to others. It will also help you get your life back. Most of all, you will be doing your part to help St. Lucia bounce back from this pandemic. Visit the Ministry of Health and Wellness and Bureau of Health Education Facebook pages for the mobile vaccine schedule. And let's take our life back. Get vaccinated. This message is brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back to Police Insight, your host, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte of the Royal Sunnisha Police Force. In studio with me is Police Constable um, Stanislas Albert, representing the RIT Department. And just before we continue our discussion, you know, this is the time I always check to see who's in the streaming platform supporting the police. Okay, so uh, I'd like to say good night to who we got there. Victor C. Anthony, always logged in, always logged in. Uh, good night to you, sir. Uh, Sanyo Joseph Poyot, good night to you. Yulin Jabatis, Manny Vig, Manny Vig, always logged in. Good night to you. Who else we got there? Tobaya, C. Eugene Toby, good night, Toby. How's everything? Uh, sweetness delicious, the delicious. Did I say that correctly? How you doing? Good night to you. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Ivy Mitchell. Good night to you. Ginny Serie, Omani Joseph. Good night to you. Um, Marceline Flavius, Angela Hippolyte from down south. Good night to you. Community Relations Branch. My staff logged in. Good night to you guys. Alexis Sikulianti, good night to you all. And I already have so many WhatsApp messages there. I'll check them out in a while. Let's continue the conversation with our guest. So, Mr. Albert, and I know this next warrant, <coughs> this next warrant we're going to speak about is, is a hot topic. So, what is the maintenance warrant. Is that the actual term or should you put child before it or is it just maintenance? Um, well, usually it comes with child. Usually it comes with because, child. Because, because the warrant itself is for the maintenance of, of children. Okay. Um, okay. It is a, a warrant that is issued from the family court, mm -hmm. one for the maintenance of children. So you find parents and um, I want to say both mothers and fathers because a lot of, a lot of the times some of the fathers um, sit out there and they blame everybody else but themselves. But um, as much as we may look at it that um, it's the, we and say that the court is a court for women, but yeah, that's that's the perception. It's sometimes so, it's, for it's women. more so because court. Mm -hmm. some of the men fail to go to the family court because maybe because of um, what they think people might see and the stigma that that's attached with it, but. Some of the men have custody of the children. Ah, and, um, interesting. And they can take the woman to, uh, to the, a man can take a woman to family court. And they, some they refuse to. So, but okay. Um, child maintenance, the maintenance warrants are warrants issued from the family court mm -hmm. for the maintenance of, maintenance of children. You find whether it's mother or father mm -hmm. who would have the child and would take the other party to the court in order that the child be maintained. I now, see. when 
what, whatever order that it is that the magistrate makes, if these orders are not adhered to, then the, the, um, the party which is the complainant will go into the court and swear on a warrant for the other party. So, and then we would receive these maintenance warrants. These maintenance warrants. Now, the maintenance, maintenance warrants comes in two forms. Oh, doctor. There is the first maintenance warrant, which is a normal maintenance warrant. A normal one? Yes. Interesting. And there is the other one, which is called a commitment maintenance. Now, with the normal maintenance, when we at the rate receive the normal maintenance, what we do is that because the, maintain the maintenance warrant comes with a little more information than any other warrant. It comes, sometimes comes with a telephone number where you can give the defendant a call, mm -hmm. inf inform him or her of the warrant, and um, they would make arrangements and come in to pay the warrant. Now, sometimes you find persons that you have these warrants for, and they have genuine excuses why they are not able to pay at the moment. So at what, you, moment. Now, what mm -hmm. you now have to do is to arrest them and take them to the court. When you take them to the court, they go before the magistrate. They explain to the magistrate why it is that they are unable to pay the warrant or why it is that they would come to the court at the moment with no cash at all. The magistrate would then make a second order, giving them some extra time oh, to pay the warrant. Okay. But with that time comes a prison sentence. So, for example, the magistrate would tell you, okay, um, you have by, let's say, the 15th of June to pay the warrant in default. 14 days or 7 days so by the 15th of June mm -hmm. if by then you've not obeyed the order that the magistrate made then another warrant I see for that same sum of money would come out for you but it, that warrant would be a commitment, commitment warrant because it would come with a term of imprisonment I see the first one doesn't I that's see. what makes it different that's what makes it different yeah now when if, if perchance you did not obey um, that second warrant, which is which is now called a commitment warrant, a commitment maintenance warrant, the, you 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 Albert, your team, you come for me, and you you take me to wait. Where do you take me? Do you take okay. me back to the court, or is it, is it now Bodley for me? No, we don't take you back to the court, or we don't take you straight to Bodley, uh -huh. um, because it's a matter of whether at the point in time when we get you that you can pay. Okay. Or if not, then you go to prison. So if yes. I do, if I'm still not paying, I go to prison mm -hmm. for for the stipulated amount of time mentioned in the warrant. Yes. Okay. So question now. So I do my 14 days. What happens after the 14 days? After the 14 days, you are released. I'm released. But, yes, but you are still. I, I still have to pay the money. I don't have to pay the money again, but right? But you still owing the the, the the said sum of money. So I still have to pay the money because um, at one point in time it was being debated and. What we got to understand is that whatever time spent at Bodley is not because of the money's owed, but because of the disobedience of the magistrate's order. Wow. So, so what you're telling me there is it's a possibility that I can end up going to prison more than once for that very same issue in one year. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. Yes. Interesting. Do, 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 read, do you guys um, have the liberty of practicing discretion? Do you use a lot of discretion for some fathers who probably would give you a reason? And do, you, do you do that? Yes, we do. Because sometimes you have a, a warrant for an individual. You would give the individual a call. And the individual would tell you, okay, I'm working, but at present I don't have the money. So, But I'm, I'm hoping that... not. I'm hoping that I'll get paid by Friday. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it takes nothing. It, it doesn't take much to wait for the Friday. Okay. Sometimes even on the Friday, because you may know persons work in construction. Sometimes they get paid late on a Friday. Mm -hmm. So by Monday morning, these persons would come in to pay. Now, if we were to arrest that person and take them back to the court, sometimes the amount of time that the magistrate would give them would be much more than you giving them a week or two by the time they get paid to come, come mm -hmm. and pay um, the monies. Sometimes too, you, you have a warrant for an individual, you speak with him, the individual doesn't have monies at the time. And they would tell you, officer, maybe um, if you don't give me, let's say, 
a week or a week and a few days by okay. which then I may not have all the money, but I will have some of the money. So even with some of the monies, we still have to take them back to the court because the Maya Street is the one who can take the part payment and mm -hmm. make an order on it. So we still have to take them back to the court. But we sometimes use our discretion, give them a little leeway in order to come up with some money because it is beneficial to the other party that they would receive some money for the maintenance the, uh, instead of nothing. Are, are some, are some, and I like to call them clients now, are some um, ladies um, frustrated sometimes with, your, with the, the, the department's um, leeway tactics or some, do you get some, some disgruntled Sometimes you get, you, you get disgruntled clients, especially if, um, because we have warrants that are at the rate sometimes for a, period of, a long period of time. Because as much as the ladies sometimes make all various claims, but I don't know for the other rate officers, but I myself, Sometimes it do, if, now it doesn't bother me at all. Okay. For example, they would make claim like the person is your friend. Or, yes, yes, we've heard so, that. And, yeah. so, and sometimes it's a, a, a guy you you seen for the first time. Okay. Most times these are individuals that we do not know. Mm -hmm. And even with the telephone number, sometimes you call them, they don't answer. Sometimes you go into out there into the communities to get them, and it's a tedious task. The guys make it very difficult to be caught. Yeah, some of them do, and sometimes it takes some time before. You, you get that individual and then you would eventually get the individual take them to the court with no money because if you have somebody who has given you all that trouble mm -hmm. if you get them sometimes you can use discretion there again you need to take them to the court and the ladies would sometimes they would not be too pleased they would not be too happy about it but what, what if what if the um the father is a police officer and there is a maintenance warrant for him does the what, what, what can you say to that in terms of the integrity of the department? Well, we've had a maintenance warrant for police officers. Mm -hmm. um, we have had issues with some. Okay, but but majority do but, pay up. Yes, majority <laughs> of them um, do pay up. Okay. In fact, some time ago we had some issue with. Um, Maintenance warrant for a couple of officers. Okay. And the commissioner had to make an order. Wow. And it was by then that um, we were able to deal with deal some with of them. These, these issues. Oh, okay. And what, what are some of the challenges? Oh, before I even ask that, um, for the listening public, if a client, um, can a client go to any police station? For example, let's say a, a client knows that um, you are, but I have, have had a difficulty in getting this individual. But let's say the client is in Viewfort, um, and the, 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 the individual in question has been seen at the Viewfort Square. Can the client go to the Viewfort station and just by word of mouth say, hey, there's a maintenance warrant for this individual. I need you all to assist in arresting him. Can that happen? That can happen. Mm -hmm. um, it has been done in the past where... Um, have it i it has happened to me on one occasion where i had a warrant for an individual and i had tremendous difficulty in finding the individual mm -hmm. and the lady in question called me a saturday morning early to tell me that she had spotted the individual in town and i said to her just go to any police officer you see patrolling on the street let okay. them know that there is a warrant for that individual okay and let them do assist in arresting the individual and that was done okay um we have had other issues in the past where officers would say to, to the individuals that they do not have the actual warrant. So I they see. cannot arrest the person. So arrest person. But I want to say to officers tonight that with regards to warrants, once you have the information or the knowledge that there is a warrant for the individual, you can arrest the individual without a warrant. Without a warrant, yes. yes. And that's, that's very important. What are some of the challenges um, the department faces? Challenges. There are so many that I, I am trying to think where to start. Um, to begin with, I want to begin with um, the level of information that comes in on the warrants. Oh, okay. Okay. This, I think, is one of um, our biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we have majority of the warrants that come in, sometimes very few of the person that you would actually know 
personally. Um, and we have to go out there to search for these people. With all what has happened over the past, you know, persons are very reluctant in giving information. So sometimes the task can be very tedious. So the information on the warrant sometimes is very lacking. Um, the High Court has made it a little better mm -hmm. with um, warrants and bench warrants coming from the High Court now that they would put some more information on there that can assist in finding the person. The commitment warrant is mm -hmm. still one of our biggest challenges because the commitment warrants come with very with much less information than any other warrant. I see. And um, sometimes even because, um, because of the length of time the matter takes before a warrant can be issued for an individual, sometimes not even the investigators can I assist see. you in, in getting that person. I see. Um, the, the commitment warrants are a, lot, a little easier because you have uh, the yes. other party to work with to yes. give you directions <laughs> or information as to where to get the individual. So yeah, yeah. The traffic warrants, traffic warrants, most of them stem from traffic tickets. Sometimes you, you, you would get a, a warrant stemming from a traffic ticket, and by the time you check it, the individual, individual no longer has the vehicle. Sometimes they have the vehicle with a different registration mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are a lot of wrong information on the warrants that persons give to police officers. <laughs> yes. And I can imagine. That too can make um, the traffic warrants Very a little bit challenging, challenging. too. Uh, the other challenge is that we have. COVID has created a very, very big challenge for us, especially with maintenance warrants. Because some persons lost their job. We have persons who are not working. Oh, I see. We have persons who, what they used to make is not the same anymore. And so many people have lost jobs, like you said. So, and, and sometimes when you approach a, a guy and he told you, he tells you, sorry, officer, that um, I've not been working for the past, say, nine months or a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially if I was used to work in the tourism industry, yeah. you know they got a serious. So hit. sometimes you, you as, as the officer, have to put yourself in that person's shoe and try to understand the situation. And at the same time, getting. Um, <laughs> How would I say that? Some pressure from the client yeah. <laughs> who, do, who, do, who doesn't want to do anything about COVID. <laughs> it, yeah. I have had situations where I have a maintenance warrant for the individual mm -hmm. and instead of having to arrest the individual, I had to turn counselor because the individual threatening, was threatening to take his life because wow. things were so bad. Interesting. So these are, the, these, are, these are some of the challenges. Um, with COVID, again, with the spike in mm -hmm. the crime situation, some of the resources have been redirected. Um, yeah, yeah. We yeah. are, the resources that we used to have, we no longer have some of them. Mm -hmm. And it makes um, the process of executing the warrants even a little bit more challenging. More challenging. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that, that's something that still has to happen no matter what. My goodness. Okay. What about the um, the cash? Um, some some warrants, like you say, um, require individuals to pay. Um, what happens to the cash collected by the officers of the red department? Well, at present, the how would I put it? The system that is now doesn't permit the red department anymore. To collect cash is that so yes interesting so what we do now is that um, we would go around executing the warrants if we find an individual and the individual has the cash to pay mm -hmm. we would escort the individual to whatever court it is to pay the cash because the warrants at the time of the cash is being paid the warrant has to be handed over and certified so if <laughs> Again, one of the challenges would be, and it has happened to me, that an individual is arrested mm -hmm. on a warrant. Mm -hmm. um, you take him into custody. They come to bring the money. And at the time in question, the courts are closed. Ah, 
Oh, I see, yeah. So, yeah, like, like the individual you know, remains in late custody. Friday. The individual remains in custody with the money in his pocket, which is, which is a very, very big challenge. Yeah, because I could imagine, you know, being arrested on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. And then um, family or friend finally arrives, brings the money probably just about after four. The court is closed, so that person has to stay in there. Until Monday. Until Monday. Interesting people. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's take another break. Um, when we come back, we'll open up the lines, but we also want to know about protection orders and occupation orders. Stay tuned to Police Insight. coming to you. There you can get the vaccine. It will protect you from developing severe outcomes of COVID-19 and make you less likely to spread the virus to others. It will also help you get your life back. Most of all, you will be doing your part to help St. Lucia bounce back from this pandemic. Visit the Ministry of Health and Wellness and Bureau of Health Education Facebook pages for the mobile vaccine schedule and let's take our life back. Get vaccinated. This message is brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. McDowell Supplements, an effective way to ensure you and your loved ones are getting the daily recommended intake of essential vitamins, minerals, and other important nutrients necessary for optimal health. Naturally, we carry an array of health and wellness supplements. McDowell's Immune Booster enhances your body's defense to fight colds and flu, boosts your immune system, prevents viruses and other airborne diseases. McDowell's Colon Cleanser prevents constipation, helps in removing toxins from the colon, detoxifies the body, and regulates your bowel movements. McDowell's Prostate Health prevent the enlargement of the prostate, improve urinary flow, and reduce frequent urination, especially at night. Moringa Oleifera capsules are rich in minerals like calcium, potassium, zinc, magnesium, iron, and copper, vitamins like beta-carotene of vitamin A, vitamin B such as folic acid, vitamin C, D, and E. McDowell's Potassium Complex, used for treating and preventing low potassium levels, high blood pressure, preventing stroke, and aid in weight loss. McDowell's Triple Magnesium relaxes the muscles, relieves cramps and helps to control high blood pressure, improves sleep, and can calm the nerves. Magnesium is very important for the normal functioning of cells, nerves, muscles, bones, and the heart. McDowell's Ginger Turmeric helps to relieve pain, decrease nausea and enhance the immune function to help protect against illness and infection. Ginger Turmeric has powerful anti-inflammatory properties and improves your circulation. Don't hold health back. Let health strike back. McDowell's, the better way to start your health. Visit Health Service Center, John Compton Highway. Call 453-6417. Let your wellness be our stress. Why are you suffering from aches, pains and illnesses? When there's help for you, at Health Service Center, we offer a wide range of treatment that has been scientifically proven to help you with your aches, pains and illnesses. Our ICT machine is one of the most effective devices in the health field. It has shown positive results in many health problems, such as back pains, shoulder pains, migraine headaches, pain in the knees and legs, poor circulation, arthritis, diabetic neuropathy, numbness in the feet, strokes and sports injuries. ICT, repairs, rebuild. The power to heal, the future of pain relief.
Welcome back to Police Insight. Your host here, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte, and my, and my guest in studio, Officer Stanislas Albert of the Reed Department. Um, before we continue the conversation, we're going to open up the lines also. Um, Shane, I think we have another video from one of our artists. Please play it. Let's hear it. Yeah, Mr. LT Anko. Remember book sent this year. Right now, we have a situation facing that really, really bad. And um, it's not totally the youths you have to be blaming for that because all these youths getting orders from somewhere is somebody that giving them directives. So, it's these people we have to address and ask them if they're not seeing what's going on in the streets. If not seen, we lose. Thank you. That was it? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and we need to hear more, <coughs> more of um, such words you know especially from those who have the influence and for those who don't know if you ever have information that you wish to um, pass on anonymously to the organization you could always call 452 crime 452 crime or that is 452 7463 452 7463 which is a great initiative and that was actually for those who don't know um an initiative brought by the the thinking of mr shari again <laughs> Mr. Rich Harry. Yeah, my brother. So we're going to open up the lines, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, um, comments for us so as we continue the conversation. It's 4533911. 4533911. You could also WhatsApp me 7200401. 7200401. I have a message here on the WhatsApp texting platform and it says, it is, un it is unfair for a person who owns earns less than $1,500 a month to pay the same amount of child support for someone who's earning $5,000 plus. But that's a good point. You have anything to say about Mr. Albert? You have anything? Um, first of all, I want to say that the question is di um, directed at the wrong channel because we don't make the orders yeah. from the court. We just receive the orders. Yes. But um, it is not something unusual. It is something that I have seen being done at the court all the time. That persons do not usually pay um, what the maintenance is capped at. Um, sometimes, depending on the individual's income, mm -hmm. their expenses and whatnot, I think all of that is taken into consideration. There are warrants that we receive for individuals who pay less than what the, the, um, the highest amount for maintenance would be because the, the highest amount for maintenance would be $200. It's 200. It's 200. still 200. Okay. Yes. And there are persons, because of the circumstances, mm -hmm. that the court will have to pay $125, sometimes $150, depending on the amount of children to involve in oh, the situation. Because okay. sometimes you will find a father having more than one child with the mother, and sometimes if they're not together anymore. Because usually, Maintenance will be brought about when the individuals are no longer together. <laughs> Most times, <laughs> yeah, if not all it the would, time. Is, usually it's when love gone sour. Because sometimes, jokingly, we say, um, when things were nice, the police was not involved. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, yes. So, so, the, so it, oh my goodness. So, Mr. All right, Mr. Greedy Joe, who makes $10,000 a month, would still be ordered to pay $200 for his child yes that's the most that, that can be because that's that's what's written in the law yeah but ladies and gentlemen I'll, I'll be honest with you in my humble opinion i believe that should be revisited and that's my opinion that's not have to do with law whatsoever i believe that um it, it should be that you made to pay depending on your circumstance so five thousand dollar greedy joe not taking care of your child you should be paying a thousand dollars a month that's just me that's just my <laughs> opinion don't, don't 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 those of you you know don't don't take me at heart um we also have a message here good evening sir and he pull it um shout out to sir and charmaine sir and george and corporal harrison of the grosley police station ladies and gentlemen lines are open um four five three three nine one one uh good evening to you sergeant and constable albert i once worked at the rit and boy oh boy i have seen men run faster than bolt for maintenance Warrants. Thank you for that. That's that. that. <laughs> 
What else we have here? Um, good night, Mr. Hippolyte. A blessed night to you and your family. It was a busy weekend for you guys. But anyway, God is in control. Congratulations to Mr. Shari for his new job. It's a tough job. But my prayer goes out to you all and the police officers at the Royal Central Police Force. Coming from Miss Jacinta Remy of Victoria Chazelle, Murder of Officer Remy now gone may he rest in peace thank you so much ma'am um let's continue the conversation let me see here anything else no all right so mr albert let's talk about protection order what is a protection <laughs> order and and and, and no, how can or what circumstance um can a, a civilian find him or herself in where they could apply for it and it be granted to them by the courts? Okay, a production order usually would stem from some domestic issues because production orders are usually given to persons of the same household. Um, it would be whether it's domestic violence or other domestic issues um, between mother and children or parents okay. and, 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 and their children. It mm -hmm. could be between siblings. Mm -hmm. It could be between boyfriend and girlfriend, husband and wife, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, if there is a, an issue, one of the parties would go to the court. They would speak with a social worker. Mm -hmm. The social worker would record whatever it is that it tells them and then send, send it to the magistrate who would review it, um, question the individual in, quest, in question. Mm -hmm. And then what we call a temporary, a temporary um, protection order would be issued. So then the, the order would be issued until a certain date, until where both parties date. would then have to come to the court so that the magistrate could hear from both parties and decide whether or not that the order should continue in a permanent form mm -hmm. or whether the order should be discontinued. I see. And... and protection orders are not there just for women no protection orders for are there for any video that feels affected or violated so do we see in your experience do you see men who are affected whatever or victims of violence because it happens um, readily come and use that option of the court in terms of domestic violence between partners, mm -hmm. um, the numbers that I've seen with men coming in to seek protection or to get a protection order against their partners is very rare. Um, very rare. Most times you would, you would find men coming in for orders, but sometimes it's, bas it's more for when they have issues with their children at home. So you find a father who has a son who feels... Oh, I see. He is yeah. the smoke son. Yeah. Wants to give attitude in the house and stuff like that. And the fathers would come to the court for a protection order because sometimes, you know, they make threats and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in these cases, you find more men coming to the court. But in terms of violent, domestic violence between the men and their partners, you would find one or two, but the numbers are not many. I see. Um, and we also have that uh, the order called the occupation order. What what what's the difference between the two? What's an occupation order? Well, the the occupation order is basically an order that would have you to remove the person from the environment um, ah, where the I violence see. is being committed. I see. So, for example, and those that I have seen during my tenure at the RIT are basically. Um, Interim. Interim. So okay. you would have to remove the person from the environment for a couple of days. Most times it is until because every protection order or occupation order comes with a date that the individual has to go to the court. So the order would be until the date of court. Like I said earlier, the magistrate would hear from both parties, mm -hmm. review the situation, and then decide what to do. The, so armed with this order you go to a home and whether it's male or female whoever the order um, is, is aimed at you would execute it does the individual have the liberty of saying officer I cannot leave now I'll leave later tonight 
There are some circumstances where it has happened. Okay. But um, most times when that would happen, it would have to happen with the consentment of the other party. Oh. Um, there has never been, we have never had that much of an issue with occupation orders because you would go to, to the place where you can find the individual and tell them, listen, mm -hmm. um, you need, you need, if, it, if it's a home, you need to leave the house. Can you find somewhere else to stay for a couple of days? Mm -hmm. Can you find a friend or a relative who can house you for a couple of days until the, the matter is, is, is issued or resolved? Um, some of the situations that we've had, especially with women that we have occupation orders against, mm -hmm. um, when they want to, if you ask them to leave for a couple of days, they would want to leave the house with everything in the house. Now there is always a dispute as to who owns who, what. Who owns what? Yes. So we usually would tell them, listen, you only live in for a couple of days. All you need is a few clothes to wear, and maybe your toothbrush, soap, whatever else it is that you need. It, and then um, whatever else it is you need to get from the house, on the day in question, the Maya Street will decide what will happen. I see. I have a question there. Um, can someone below 18 apply for any of those orders, or, do you, or, or must you be an adult? I am not to sure sure with the protection order if someone below 18 can apply for a protection uh -huh. order but with the occupation order the individual has to be over 18. okay oh i have i have someone who's a bit disgruntled this individual says the child protection agency better known as department of family services in my opinion is the worst agency in the land biasness is the order of the day when the forwards come crumbling down on them, I hope they will be able to face it. I, I, you know, sometimes, uh, um, Mr. Albert, um, I know some individuals have those type of reactions, especially to, to, to departments and agencies like yourself that deal with human beings. But sometimes, there are, like you said, you have challenges, and I'm sure those other agencies have challenges, people, when it comes to that. I will definitely try and get as a matter of fact, I'm already in talks with human services um, to hopefully get a representative here for us so we could have that discussion about um, what they do and what they do not do. Let me see. I think I have another question here. How does one pay? How is one able to pay if they are in jail? Maybe the person didn't hear from the beginning when it comes to the child maintenance warrant. So you know, like this person is saying, oh, I, I cannot pay, but you still send me to jail. That's not fair. We well, took, we took. well, like we said earlier, mm -hmm. the, um, going to jail is not because of the failure to pay the money, but because of failure mm -hmm. to obey the magistrate's order. Mm -hmm. um, and in most cases, even before you get, go to, the, the individuals go to jail for child maintenance, they are afforded the opportunity to pay the child maintenance um, even little by little. And if an effort is being made, although sometimes you, you, you genuinely see the difficulty in paying the maintenance, because there are some other guys who come crying and you can see the genuineness that they're basically not working at the moment and it's very difficult. They are, and over the years, doing child maintenance, you consider genuine ones and you know those who basically mm -hmm. pay the trick. <laughs> um, it comes with the experience. Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes it, it, can be, it can be difficult for them. But even with that, they are afforded the opportunity of paying the maintenance. If you, can't pay, if you cannot pay the full hundred, you can pay. If you have a 20, come in and pay it. If you have another 20, come in and pay it. Pay it as little as little until you can clear off the maintenance. What so if you're going to drink four beers <laughs> over the weekend, Just the don't 20 dollars, yeah. take it and put it out of yeah. the court. As, as a, you, you're a father, Mr. Albert. Yes, I am. Okay. A, I, uh, and this is more like a personal question, your personal opinion. Um, do you believe the, the amount of $200 is enough? in terms of child maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on the spot then I really Yeah, you would be on the spot. 
<laughs> there, there are lots of ladies waiting to listen there. I have, to an I have an answer to that question. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't, the, the men that we usually <laughs> yeah. think about your men and stupid men, I don't want to say anything else so that the women do mm -hmm. try to take my neck. Mm -hmm. But honestly speaking, $200 to me can do nothing much for a child. Because I have two children. And Two hundred dollars worth of groceries these days from the supermarket is two small bags. I finish is in, in about a few days, a day or two. So, to me, two hundred dollars for a child, especially if if, if he's a child going to secondary school, where transportation has to be paid. And hold on, Mr. Albert, we have a call. Finally, good night. Let's take that call. Good night, Carla. Yes, Thank right. you for calling. Yeah, um, I'm listening to um, a very important and intriguing topic. Thank you, sir. But I was once put out by the family courts because of my ex-wife made a, a complaint and then police came with guns. Imagine, five policemen came with guns to take me out of the house, okay? I mm -hmm. was taken out of the house. And imagine when I went to court, the only thing the magistrate asked for, do you have a key for the house? And they just tell me I have to stay two years out of the house, you know? So that's why I say this family court is one-sided. It is a one-sided affair. It's only on women's side. You two know? years, that's why I say it's only <laughs> Right? Uh -huh. Men were being brought into the house. When I went back to the social worker and complained, you know what the woman tell me? Oh, you find a job, find a life, you know? And the wo my ex-wife tell me, no matter what you go and tell her, anything you tell her, they won't believe you. And so said so then, you know? So what I'm saying, this family court is a one-sided affair, you know? And that is my personal view. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Good night. Th thank you, sir. You know, I know um, th that that perception has always been there, yeah. um, Mr. Albert. Um, do you, f I, well, I, I personally believe that we should have um, something more for men. I know that um, Martin James, good night to you, Sergeant. I don't know if you're listening. Um, some time ago, um, he brought some, some of us guys together, like-minded guys. Um, and, the, the, and the plan is to create a, a men's center. Um, where probably, you know, men could have their voices heard and stuff like that. Um, here is a caller stating that um, through his experience, he, he believes that the family call is one-sided, but yet in law, it, it's not supposed to be so. Um, one of the things that I can boldly say is that, um, because that's a complaint that I've heard over and over and over, mm -hmm. that the family court or, or basically some people will call, would call it the women's court mm -hmm. um, but from because the red department and the family court works very closely and over the years from what I've observed and from all my observation and dealing with the family mm -hmm. court one of the things that I, I strongly feel is that the laws governing the family court need to be revisited mm -hmm. and over the years, mm -hmm. um, the governments who have been in there, none of them have seen it fit to revisit the laws, the laws. governing the family court. I have heard the political parties mm -hmm. during the campaign mm -hmm. clearly stated, and it, in the last election it was said that mm -hmm. if um, the governments came in that there would be changes. They are up till now, there are no changes. So the, the laws from the family court need to be revisited. And um, I, I noticed the caller uh, made the statement. Okay, we have another call. Okay, let's take that call. Good night, caller. Thank you for calling Police Insight. Yes, good night, uh, Sergeant Zachary. Hey, what's up, buddy? Um, Talk to me. Yeah, good night to your guest, Mr. Albert. Good night, good night. Yeah. Uh, I can hardly hear Mr. Albert, but um, I, I tuned it a bit late, mm -hmm. but I was um, early enough to hear your last caller. And um, I, I want to sort of agree with the caller. Okay. Um, in terms of, of what he has 
um, spoken to as it relates to his experience. And um, you see, it is not just in the um, administration of the the um, family laws. The the whole point is that it is correct that um, the it seemed to be um, one sided. It seems um, to discriminate um, against men, hmm. and um, obviously there is a need for reform um, in terms of the, the laws that govern the family. Um, I, I don't have enough to, uh, in terms of, of um, the people who would have been responsible for putting the legislation together, mm -hmm. but it is something that I'm, I'm looking uh, into. and. Um, uh, based on the, the provisions of our uh, the provisions in our constitution, um, I think there, there need to be some serious work on the, the part of the parliament, the lawmakers. Mm -hmm. And so, um, whereas it may not happen in this parliament, I am looking forward to. Uh, some of this reform taking place uh, before the end of the next parliament because it is important that uh, the, the provisions of the constitution notwithstanding um, some people telling you that they need con uh, we need constitutional reform mm -hmm. um, if we are to follow the constitution as it was intended then um, I think we would find that the constitution is is uh, more than adequate. So I, I am in agreement with, with the caller. In okay. even when you look at um, the situation with maintenance, and you spoke earlier to the amount that uh, the court uh, can demand of a, a, a father. Mm -hmm. Now it should have been of a parent. Eh? Really yes. and truly, if you're looking at um, equality. I agree, yes. Um, so <laughs> it should have been of a parent. And um, it does not really work that way. So we spoke to the, the amount. And whereas you can put um, amounts whereby the court will exercise discretion, um, obviously it's not um, that way in the, yeah. in the, um, the domestic um the the laws that deals with maintenance mm -hmm. and so they, they probably realized that you know it was so one-sided that they did not want um uh, they did not want to be too draconian unless you know someone said no 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 we're not going to pass that legislation you know and and so they probably left it at that but um i agree that the laws relating to family life need to be looked into okay. um, by the, the parliament. Thank you, Carla. Yes. Yeah, and, and thank you, Carla. And, and, and Mr. Albert, especially, and, and I don't know if that happens, and I, I'm hoping I could get um, someone from the family court one day on the show. I have tried before. I have tried before. I don't know who to check anymore for that. But um, I, um, is it only... Um, that's the only order that's given to your to your knowledge or experience um, in terms of the father has having to pay this amount of money. Is there any order such as he has to spend some time with the child or, or etc. Or, or, or the next school visit he must go or if the child falls sick he must take the child to doctor. Do, do you are you aware of any such orders being given to fathers? Yes, I am. Um, okay. There are circumstances usually when the order is made to pay the maintenance mm -hmm. that um, it would be that school supplies and medical bills ah, would be part of it. 50-50. Uh, Between the, the father and the mother. The, and the mother. Oh, um, I see. There are also um, instances where they would be ordered for visitation rights that Mm -hmm. uh, the mother would spend one weekend with the child and the, f the father would spend the other weekend. 
the issue about that is that most times the men would come to you and tell you that the order that the Maya should made for the visitation rights are being disobeyed. And some of, the, some of them tell you basically in some instances that's why they don't pay the maintenance because they tell you how can I pay maintenance for a child that I'm not seeing. Oh, and the I sad see. thing about it is that when these men um, do not get their visitation rights, mm -hmm. nothing has been done about it. Interesting. Wow. Okay, well, I, I personally, um, I have an issue with men not taking care of their responsibility. Um, I believe that, like you said, Mr. Albert, the police was not there when things was nice. But if as a result of your interaction with a female, intercourse, etc., and that has brought forth a child, you know, a man should, should take care of his child as much as possible. Do you believe, Mr. And Mr. Albert, I'm about to ask this another question, but really and truly, ladies and gentlemen, it really should not be him. It, it, it really should be for a, a, a representative of the family court. But since they work closely, I'm just trying to get into Mr. Albert's head. We've heard this, 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 this perception or allegation that some mothers use the, the process of child maintenance mostly for themselves and not for the child. Have you, have you ever had fathers making such complaints to you, whether personal or professional or anything like that? Just this morning, I, I, I heard an allegation made by a father. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. So. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. But these are, these are a circumstances, I can tell you, that has happened. Okay. I know of, of incident where the parents came well, not a parent, but the mother came in mm -hmm. and made a whole bunch of noise about the child, the maintenance. And then a couple of days later, what I observed, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I since see. I was on vacation at the time, when I met a colleague of mine, I, I asked certain questions and the colleague told me, well, that's what happened. She came in, she kept some noise. The guy was arrested. The relatives had to come in and pay the warrant. Okay. And then a couple of days later, I met the guy and he told me, you see, your partners arrest me. And you see what the money was used for? And, and to your knowledge, there is no form of um, avenue for a father to bring up um, such a complaint to the court? Or, or is it something that the court says, well, in their mind, whatever she does with the money is her business? You see, sometimes it's not just a matter of bringing up a complaint, but is even if you bring up a complaint, how can you substantiate that? Yeah, there your you money is well. The, yeah, and it's kind of difficult. And yeah. sometimes the ladies would tell you, and some of them are right that when the maintenance was not paid, they had to use their own money True. To, to maintain, to take the, care of the, to maintain child. the children. Yeah. So now that the money is paid, yeah, they have that money. They have do. the right. They can use it to do whatever. To do whatever else they want. That they already had to do. So. Yeah. Especially, especially um, if it, if it, indirectly or directly, whatever want to use it, still um, benefits the child. Because if a mom, if a mom um, uses some of the money to pay the current bill or pay the water bill or pay some bills, it's for the comfort of that child. Yeah. Mr. Albert, what is the the, um, if you care to say, what's the largest sum? Um, in terms of a maintenance warrant you have ever executed? Well, a poor dad. Had, <laughs> I'm saying poor. Guys, I'm not listening to me. I am not supporting you who's taking, who's not taking care of your child, you know. I'm not supporting you at all. There's no excuse. But what's the largest um, 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 amount? Um, if my memory serves me right, to me, the largest sum I've seen is 20 something thousand dollars. 20 something thousand dollars. Usually, anytime you see a maintenance warrant, over five thousand dollars there is always a story and an issue to it because um just this morning i had one for fourteen thousand dollars fourteen wow and the first thing i said to the guy was usually when i see these sums there is some issue and a mm -hmm. story behind yeah. that amount so what's it <laughs> he gave me his story he gave me the story so usually we're in cases like that and in the in the court it is always said to the guys, 
And then you have the guy, you later down the line, you find them coming back and say the same thing that was. Mm -hmm. I have sat in the court and have heard the Maya Street in the family court at present say to the guys over and over, once an order is made in the court, any monies that you have to give to the other party, come and put it at the family court. And some other guys would still go ahead and give the ladies the money in their hands and later. Mm -hmm. Because the ladies would receive the money and after a while go back and swear on a warrant when the maintenance has not been paid for a long period. Yes, yes. And when you go to the guy, first, things they, first thing they would tell you is that um, I gave her the money in her hand and she said she would go and inform the court. And that has always created an, Cre issue. Create an issue. Yeah. I have a, 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 a statement there. A contribution actually from the WhatsApp texting platform. Amen, Sergeant. Some men always want to sleep with the children's mother before they can feed their children. And if they don't get to do that, they don't give that child a dollar unless they sleep with that woman. Shame on these men. Let me see what else I have there. Oh, we have we have an officer saying I once had a, a warrant in the amount of twenty eight thousand six hundred dollars. The guy was overseas. He demanded the DNA, only to be told you're not the father. Oh, listen to me. We're about to end. Here is another thing again, Mister Albert. Which you 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 <laughs> I'm ready, Mister Albert. All questions, but honestly. Is there any redress or any form of um, what happens to a man who has been paying? Okay, he has accepted the child is his. He has been paying that 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 those monies. Unlike the officer just stated there, let's say he went abroad or whatever the case may be, come back twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars. This time demands a DNA only to find out that the child is not his. Do you know if there is any redress for those fathers? Yes, there is redress. There is? Yeah. And the redress is through the courts. It's through the courts. Yeah. So a father can go to the courts and, 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 and get if, some... If you you have been paid maintenance and then there are doubts and then uh, DNA is done and then it turns out that the child is not, not yours, there is always redress through the courts. I see. Okay. All right, um, Mr. Albert, it's already after 10. Final um, comments, say what you got to say so we can close up shop. Okay, I just want to say to the public out there, um, we know what the issues are. We know that the situations that COVID has created. Um, let us not go out there and make the job of the police more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, to the fathers who we have to deal with on a daily basis for child maintenance. We know the situations and the times are tough, but try to do as much as you can. Because sometimes it is not, the only, it is not only the monies that is important, it is also the time spent with the child, um, the relationship that you have with the child. To the young individuals out there, especially the individuals with the guns, because it's not a, it's not only a situation where I'm a police officer, I also do youth work out there in the community and all over the place. And I want to say to the youth, there are better ways of resolving the issues. There are better ways of dealing with each other, other than the guns. Because um, most times, innocent persons get caught up in the situation. Because I can tell you, the young lady who lost her life on Sunday in Guadalajara, mm -hmm. I know for a fact that it was just a matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Four years back, I had a nephew who got caught up in that same situation, and it has not been an easy one. To those of us out there who continue to work with the youth to try to make our environments and the community a bit safer, um, continue doing what you all are doing. You may not be able to save everybody, but if you can save at least one, then at least somebody will pass on a good word. Thank you, Mr. Albert, for coming here and being my guest on Police Insight. Do have a good night, sir. And um, yes, people, so another great show, very informative. We know we're in the city season, um, but don't forget you have a responsibility. Some of y'all, 
some of you all neglect your children and then later on in life when those children become doctors police officers businessmen and women and, 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 and something I learned quickly, very quickly, before we close. There's a, I, I was speaking to an individual today who works at Human Services. And she informed me that there are a lot of elderly men. Mr. Albert, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of elderly men who are all alone. They're all alone in their late years. No one is taking care of them, though they have children. And that is because they neglected their children when they were young. And now that they're old, they're somewhere in an old house. And now we have human services and the, care, the, 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 the caregivers have to deal with them. Take care of your children. For in the end, they should and shall take care of you. So anyway, people, have a good night. Thank you for watching. All those who called, all those who were on the Facebook chat. Stay safe. See you next Tuesday. Good night.